Two spacemen were running across a large green pasture. They kept going until they ran out of breath and looked around in terror. Nothing was around and they let out of some size of relief. Then they noticed another man in a spacesuit running to them over a hill and Weary lived to see him. Aspen said that the creatures are still hunting for them and that he distracted them with a piece of Felton who got ravaged just before they fled. Borsalino and Staffer were saddened that Felton was first of their group to go but they had no choice flee in order to survive what they discovered. Suddenly Aspen felt something caught his ankle. He stayed still and Borsalino and Staffer just looked stunned. A brown furry paw was sticking out of the ground and then quickly dragged Aspen into the ground. Staffer reached out to pull him out but it was no use and blood starting spurting out from Aspen. Aspen got quickly pulled into the hole and disappeared. Borsalino and Staffer then heard childish screeching in the distance and they quickly fled forward to avoid being caught. The doctor was tinkering with the console. He was trying to correct the coordinate system due them landing in the 1990s from their past adventures on Earth. 1994's Mallorca, 1992's Norwich and 1995's Manchester. Louisa was walking around the console while the doctor was still working on it and then the TARDIS landed. She then started to smell a sweet vanilla scent coming into the TARDIS and asked the doctor if he planted an air freshener. The doctor got up and denied this especially that he's not keen on the scent of vanilla. He's more of a floral or white linen scent type of person. He reached for his jacket and Louisa followed to the doors. He opened the doors and looked out. The TARDIS landed in a green pasture filled with large metallic colored pinwheels in the distance and the scent of vanilla become more prominent. Louisa asked if they are on a planet and the doctor suggests this but never to one like this before. They left the TARDIS and went to walk round. For a planet it was quiet too quiet. Louisa said the inhabitants must be devoted hermits and the doctor was in thought. Something's not right and wonders if a war had broken out on this world. Suddenly two wheels cut out in the shape of a lion and a bear rolled quickly to them growling. The doctor and Louisa raced away and found a small purple stone cave. They hid into it and laid low to try avoid detection. Once the two wheeled cut outs left, the doctor was questioning how this world operates and Louisa wonders if they've ended up in a sadistic episode of Sesame Street. The doctor just looked at her and then suddenly Louisa let out a scream. A hand of touching her back and told her to keep quiet. The doctor quickly turned and it was Borsalino and Staffer who were also in hiding. Both of them told the doctor and Louisa that this planet is called Colith. Once a place of a sanctuary devoted to children who have mental conditions and the idea was to rehabilitate them in a more peaceful calmer environment. Away from the horrors of the universe and condensed in a bubble of delight and lovingness. However the arrival of son of a planet's dictator changed everything and for the worst. The kind loving creatures that the children had created from their imaginations started to turn vile and the dictator's son's brainwaves affected the peace and love that were created for. Slowly they turned to things like cannibalism, mutilation and dismemberment. The children and the older guardians were killed by this switch in personality, leaving those creatures to run riot and create their version of paradise. Louisa then asked about the dictator's son and if he's alive. Borsalino said that apparently when the brainwave takeover went into full swing the dictator's son supposedly committed suicide and his body was taken presumably eaten like the rest. Louisa's mouth opened and didn't say anything after that. The doctor looked at the openness of the pasture and wondered where these creatures are situated base-wise. Suddenly the cave started to shake and fall apart. The doctor, Louisa, Borsalino and Staffer escaped the cave and went out in the open. They were surrounded by the imaginative creatures and captured. They tied them to sticks and were hanging like sloths on tree branches. They were taken to a grass-covered dome in the middle of a pit with circular doors and windows. The doctor, Louisa, Borsalino and Staffer were tied to chairs. The creatures approached a wacky multicolored tubular machines and pulled a couple of levers. Emerging out of it was a pink whip substance and placed it in bowls of that resembled colors of the rainbow. They presented this stuff and forcefully fed it to Staffer. Staffer spat it out and the creatures tried again only this time they held his mouth opened. They restrained him and fed him the pink whip. He did swallow it and settled back in the chair. He let out a scream and the creatures laughed out loud at the sight of this. Staffer's spacesuit started to show blood around his stomach area and steam was coming out his mouth. Borsalino shouted Staffer's name in shock and berated the creatures for killing him. The creatures stared at him and only replied in baby talk. Louisa told the doctor to do something fast and the doctor started to whistle a nursery rhyme to distract them. They approached the doctor like bees to a flower and listening in. 
Then they started clapping their hands and jumping up and down on the spot. The doctor stopped abruptly and questioned them about their purpose. The creatures just stood there drooling from their mouths and spoke in their baby talk. The doctor realizes that the creatures have low intelligence and their minds had devolved back to an infant's. Because there's no children with speech or intuitive brainwaves. These creatures were left in the wild to defend themselves after a terrifying psychological change and what they learned from that child corrupted them to the very core. The creatures then turned Louisa and leaned against her. One of them had the audacity to fondle her breasts and Louisa quickly reacted by spitting in its face. The creatures then ballistic and started to violently shake the chairs. What this ended up doing was the skipping tight ropes became loose and this caused the doctor, Louisa and Borsalino to be freed. The three crawled out of the rampage and escaped out of the large room. The doctor, Louisa and Borsalino headed into some corridors filled with fluorescent tube lighting and black metal walls. The doctor tried to navigate a way out and Borsalino stated that he'll stay here to die. The doctor tried to persuade him to come with him and Louisa. Borsalino said he part of a suicide mission to destroy Colith. He's a prisoner doing dirty work for the Oztach company and with his colleague Staffer. Aspen and Felton are dead. Louisa tried to persuade him in her own manner but Borsalino responded with something that made Louisa's blood turn cold. Would rescuing an imprisoned rapist who has 72 victims under his belt make a difference? Staffer was an arsonist. Aspen was a trafficker and Felton attempted to overthrow a government. The doctor stood silent and came to agreement. He told Borsalino to go with his decision and Borsalino said he'll give them the chance to escape. He parted ways with the doctor and Louisa. She was still struck by the revelation of Borsalino but they need to get out of this place and the doctor found a window. They climbed out and headed for the barren green pastures. Borsalino came into the creature's view and shouted at them. He shouted to them to kill him. They wanted more prey to feed on and now's the chance. The creatures pounced on him and savagely ripped him apart. His suicide mission was over. The doctor and Louisa across the pasture to where the TARDIS is. The creatures started throwing plastic toys at them but they had sharp edges on them and cut both of them in scratch marks. Louisa dropped some blood of the grass and some of the creatures dived to the ground to sniff it. They jumped up quickly and began chase again. They had the scent of the blood. The two reached the TARDIS and quickly closed the doors. The creatures banged and battered it trying to get in. The doctor reached the console and set off a quick release. The creature got flown 10 yards away from the TARDIS energy wave and fell flat onto the ground. The TARDIS shot off in the air and the doctor and Louisa were on the floor. The problem was where the TARDIS was going to next.